Hey, it's me, Crystal, and today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable Amigurumi Pug plushie. I think this turned out so adorable. I based it on my pug, Daisy, who's about to make an entrance here. There she is. I think she approved. This tutorial is a little bit longer than a lot of my tutorials, but I will show you how to make this whole little plushie from start to finish. And let's get started. For this project, I used Honey Bunny Yarn by Hobie, and this is the color number five. And it's kind of a yellowish tan color. And you see this is a size six bulky yarn. It's like a chenille yarn. And you'll also need some black of the same type of yarn. Then I'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook, which is pretty small for this yarn, but that's good for amigurumi so we don't have any big holes. You'll also need some scissors, a stitch marker of some sort, and some safety eyes if you're not making this for a baby. And these are 12 millimeter safety eyes, just round ones with the backs. And I also have a 15 millimeter safety nose. So it's kind of a triangle shape. And that is kind of optional. If you don't want to use that, you can do this without it, but I think it makes it a little extra cute. And then you'll need some stuffing. I'm just using polyfill and a yarn needle also. All right, we're going to start by making the snout, or as I like to call it, the pug stash. So start by making a slip knot and just putting it on your hook. And we're going to chain six times. And I apologize that it's difficult to tell what's going on here because this yarn, for one, is black and two is chenille yarn. So it is kind of tough to see. But when you're doing it in person, it's actually pretty easy to tell where your stitches are. All right, there's our six chains and you see, you can see the six lumps <laughs> and we're going to single crochet in the second chain from our hook. So here's the first chain and then we're going to single crochet right into that second one right there. So insert your hook into that chain and make your single crochet. Then in the next chain, we're going to do the same thing. Another single crochet in the next chain. Then in the next chain over, we're going to do two single crochets or an increase. And this will kind of give our pug stash the little boomerang shape with the bend in the center. Then in the last two chains, you're just going to make one single crochet in each one. There we go. And then to finish it off, we're going to slip stitch into the underside of that last stitch. So just kind of like the bottom near the starting knot that we had. And then go ahead and finish it off, pull your yarn out, and then leave a pretty long tail and cut it. And then pull the loop where your crochet hook was out. And there is our little snout or our little pug stash is all done. So you can just set that aside and then we will start on the body. Grab your tan yarn and we're going to start by making a regular slip knot and putting it on our hook. Then you're going to do a chain two. And then we're going to make six single crochets in that first chain. So right here, 
That's the one we just did. And then the first chain that we made, that's where we're going to work our six single crochets. Now, if you wanted to, you could also do a magic loop here and then make your six single crochets into your magic loop. But uh, I'm trying, I tried not to use too many magic loops because this yarn can be tricky with those. So sometimes it's hard to tighten them. We do have to use it for one part of this plushie, but not this part. <laughs> All right, once you get your six single crochets done, we're going to make the next row, which we're gonna do increases. So we find your first single crochet of the last row, which is right here. You're gonna work two single crochets into that stitch and make sure you're going under both loops. It can be kind of hard to tell with this yarn since it's so fluffy but I'm just showing here that I am under both loops and then you're going to make an increase in that stitch which just means two single crochets in the same stitch. Once you do those first two go ahead and grab your stitch marker and place it in that first stitch so not that one but that one <laughs> the first one that we made. That way you can keep track of where your row begins and then go ahead and increase in the remaining five stitches around. Once you finish this row, you'll have 12 stitches all together. Okay, now we're gonna do round three. So for this round, we're gonna take our stitch marker out. And then in the first stitch, you're gonna make an increase. So two single crochets right in that first one. Then go ahead and place your marker in your first stitch. And then you're going to make one single crochet in the next stitch. And that will be our pattern for this row. So you do an increase in the next stitch. And then one single crochet in the next stitch and just repeat that around six times all together. And once you're done, you'll have 18 stitches at the end of this row. All right, now we're gonna do row four. So I'm removing my stitch marker again. And then for this one, you'll make an increase in the first stitch. And then go ahead and place your marker in your first stitch and in the next two stitches you'll just make one single crochet in each one. And repeat that around six times. So do another increase. And then a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And once you finish this row, you'll have 24 stitches all together. For rows five through eight, we're just gonna do one single crochet in each stitch. So these are nice relaxing rows. 
So go ahead and do your first one and place your marker and then you just do one stitch in each stitch around and you're going to do that for this row and through row eight and you'll have 24 stitches in each one of these rows. Now we're on to row nine and we're going to have another increase row here. So we're going to remove our marker and in the first stitch you'll do an increase. And then I'm going to go ahead and place my marker in my first stitch. And then in the next three single crochets, you're just going to do one single crochet in each one. And you're just going to repeat that around. So do another increase. And then one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And you'll repeat that around six times and then you'll have 30 stitches by the end of your row. For rows 10 through 12, we're going to just single crochet around again. So those are easy ones. Just make one single crochet in each stitch around and each row has 30 stitches all together. Just remember your marker. It will make things much easier for you. All right, for row 13, you're going to, we're going to do a first decrease. So this is our first decrease row. So over these first two stitches, you're going to insert your hook under just the front loop of the first one, and then under just the front loop of the second one, like this. Then you're going to yarn over and pull it through those two loops. There you go. And then yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And that's how you do a decrease in amigurumi. And then go ahead and place your marker in that stitch. And then you're going to do one single crochet in the next three stitches. All right, and then you're going to do another decrease in the next two stitches. So just go under the front loops only of both of those stitches. Yarn over and pull through both of those loops. Yarn over and pull through both. And there you go. And then one single crochet in the next three. And you're just going to repeat that pattern around six times all together. And you will have 24 stitches once you are done doing this round. Okay, well here's how it looks so far. Kind of looks like a little potato. And now we're going to add our eyes before we get any further. 
So I counted down about five rows from the top and that's where I decided to put my eyeballs. So go ahead and grab them and we're going to figure out where we want them before we commit. <laughs> so I was just deciding which side I wanted to put them on. It really doesn't matter since it's all in a spiral, but I just put one there and then I count about five stitches over um, roughly to figure out where to put the other one. You can put yours differently if you want. I thought that looked pretty good. And I'm not putting the backs on yet because we're gonna figure out where to put the nose first. And you gotta make sure you're happy with the placement. So grab your little pug stash and you'll see it kind of like sticks out. It's like puffy on one side and that's the side you want facing out. So it kind of makes it look a little bit more 3D. And first we're going to take our little nose. If you're using this, if you're not, you could just skip this and, and attach it later whenever we sew things on. But if you are using the nose, you can stick it right through the top center of the little boomerang shape like that. I think it just looks so cute like that. And then you're going to put it right in the middle in between the two eyes. So right in that same row. And that's a pretty good placement. And you can move it up or down if you want, but I thought that looked pretty good. So make sure it's all straight and how you like it and you're happy with it. And then once you know you're 100% sold where, where it's at, grab your backs of your safety eyes and your safety nose, and you're just gonna stick it on there and you push it down until it clicks and that holds it in place. Now there's one, and then we're going to do the eyeballs. So here's our other little back. Stick that on there, and then there's one more. And then we have committed on our eyeball and nose placement. <laughs> and just tell me that isn't adorable already. It's crazy how much that made it just adorable. But there you go. And now we're going to start on to round 14. This is another decrease row. So in our first two stitches, we're going to do a decrease. So go under those first two loops on the front, yarn over and yarn over again. And then in the next two stitches, you're just going to single crochet. And then I almost forgot to place my marker, but make sure you put your marker in that first stitch. And then I got to do one more single crochet here. And there you go. So then repeat that around six times. So do another decrease and then two single crochets in the next two and repeat that around. And you'll have 18 stitches by the end of this row. All right, now we're on to row 15. So we're going to start with a decrease and then you'll do one single crochet and then you'll repeat that around six times. So I'm starting here with my decrease. And then place your marker and in the next stitch, you'll just do one single crochet. And then another decrease in the next one. Or in the next two, should I say. <laughs> and then one single crochet in the next stitch. And then just repeat that around. And at the end of this row, you'll have 12 stitches all together. All right, now that we're almost done and we need to have a little bit of a hole left here, we're gonna go ahead and add our stuffing. So you're gonna stuff it all the way down in there. Make sure you stuff it good and firm, but not too much. You want it to just be firm, but still have a little give to it like this. 
so it keeps its shape and has this cute little potato shape. And then we're going to do our last row here of actual crochet before we sew up the bottom. And for this, you're just going to do six decreases all the way around. So every two stitches, you're doing a decrease. And by the end of this row, you'll have six stitches left. All right, now all we have to do is sew up the bottom. So you're going to cut your yarn, leaving a tail that's probably about a foot long or so. I like to leave a little extra because this yarn can sometimes shred on you and you have to be careful. <laughs> so then just pull the loop that your crochet hook was on out and you see the end just kind of, parts of it start falling off. So it's good to have a little extra yarn. And you go ahead and remove your stitch marker and grab your yarn needle. And you're going to thread the end of your yarn onto your yarn needle. And then we're going to just whip stitch through each of the six stitches. I'm going to go around to the left. So you just go under like inside and then to the outside through and then pull it gently you want to, this yarn you got to really be careful with it so you pull it but don't like go crazy because it can snap sew through all of the six stitches gently pulling in between each one and then once you get through all six i like to go through one more and then tie a knot just to make it a little more secure so to do that i leave a little loop like this and then I bring the needle through it and then just pull it and it'll make a little knot there at the base and tighten it up. And then you're going to insert your needle into the center and bring it out kind of like somewhere on the other side of your little puggy so that the end of the yarn will be nicely buried inside. I'll just pull it through and make sure everything is not puckered up there. And then pull on it a little bit while you cut the end, and that'll make the end get buried in the middle of your plushie. All right, so now our body is done, and we can start making all the extra parts. So we're going to make the paws now. So go ahead and just make a slip knot on your crochet hook with that same color of yarn. We're going to make four paws. We're going to, again, start with a chain two, just like we did with the body. And then in that first chain, you're going to do six single crochets. Once you get those first six done, you're going to make one single crochet in each stitch around. Go ahead and stick your marker in there just to make your life a little easier. And then you're just going to do one stitch in each stitch around. And this will make like a little cup shape. And then we'll just poke it out and it'll make a little cute paw.
And then once you finish that row, you just kind of turn it inside out like this or outside in or whatever you want to call it. And that's what it'll look like. It's a little um, half circle thingy. So cut it leaving a decent long tail and then pull the loop out that your hook was on. And again, you're going to lose half of the fluff on the end of your yarn and take out the stitch marker. And then what I like to do is take that middle yarn that we used, our starting end, and just stuff it in the center. And that way when we go to attach them, there'll be like a little filling in there and it'll keep it from getting dented in or anything. So there you go, you got a little paw. So just make four of those. And now we're gonna make the tail. So again, we're just making a slip stitch, putting it on our hook. And we're gonna chain nine times. And once you finish your chain, then we're gonna, in the second chain from our hook, so one, two, in that second one, we're gonna do one single crochet. And then in the next six chains, you're gonna do an increase. So you'll do two single crochets in each of the next six chains. Working increases like this in each stitch is gonna make a cute little curly tail, which is just perfect for our little pug. So do that for each of the next six chains. And then in the last chain, just do one single crochet. And that is it for the tail. So again, you see how cute that is. It just looks so cute. Um, then take your yarn end, cut it leaving a bit of a tail, <laughs> no pun intended, and then pull the loop out and be prepared to get covered in pieces of yarn. It's just all, it was everywhere by the end of this. And there's our little cute curly tail and you can just stick that aside and we will do the ears. For this we are doing a magic loop, so wrap the yarn around your fingers and pull up a loop. Then pinch the loop to hold it in place and bring your working yarn over to the side it normally is on. And then chain one time and that will make your magic loop stable. And then you're going to do two single crochets inside the magic loop. Now you're gonna carefully tighten the loop, and this can be tricky with this yarn. It's kinda doesn't wanna move sometimes, it gets stuck. <laughs> so just carefully pull it and then tighten it up. All right, so now we have a teeny tiny little triangle. It looks like this. <laughs> so now you're gonna chain one and turn. Okay, and then we're gonna make an increase in each of those single crochets. So you're just gonna do two single crochets in each of the two stitches that we just made in our magic loop. And this will make a slightly bigger triangle. Okay, there's our slightly bigger triangle. How it looks so far. So now we're gonna do one more row. We're gonna do a chain one again and turn. And now we're gonna increase in the first stitch. Then you're just gonna single crochet into the next two stitches. So the two middle ones. Mm -hmm. 
and then you're going to increase in the last stitch. And that is it for our ear. So you're going to make two of those and leave a tail about a foot long or so and cut your yarn just like we do for all of our parts. Pull the loop that your hook is in out. Prepare to be showered with yarn particles <laughs> and then just repeat that again for the second ear. And there's our two cute little ears. And now it's time to move on to sewing on the pug stash. So what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to take the short end and it's kind of coming out to the front. So I wanted it to go down through the back of the mustache thingy. And so I'm going to thread this yarn onto my needle and just feed it down through. I'm not going to sew it on to the pug with this tail because it's short. But I just wanted to make sure it wasn't sticking out of the front. So I did that first and then I went ahead and threaded the long tail onto my needle. And be careful when you're doing this part if your yarn gets stuck or anything it can shred on you. <laughs> but insert it down into the mustache on like right near where your yarn is coming out. And then we're going to go up under one of the loops of the pug, like right under where it would, where the mustache is laying. And then I know it's not a mustache, by the way, I just, I don't know what else to call it. And then we're going to come back up through and we're kind of doing like a running stitch for this instead of a whip stitch. I think it looks a little bit better that way. Just to make sure it's laying how you want it to. And then now, since the nose is holding on the center, I'm going to go down and then come up on the other side. If you didn't do the nose, like the plastic nose, then you'd want to sew all the way around. But since I used the safety nose that is holding that middle top part, so I'm just bringing the needle over to the other side. And then again, I'm just going straight down and then picking up a loop. And then I'm coming back up through the black part and just repeating that until I get all the way back to where I started. And once, um, once I get around, you'll see that I come back on the side and that is because I just didn't quite get close enough to the edge on the side and it was kind of flappy and I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure. So I did come back over. You'll see in a second. I will come back over and stitch that down a little bit more solidly. So if that happens to you or you're not quite happy with it, you can always just head back over there and stitch it down a little bit better and no big deal. All right, this is where I kind of noticed it was still a little flappy over there. So I just inserted my needle all the way over to the other side and just made sure it was held down like I wanted it to and then brought it back over. I don't know why I didn't tie those ends together. I probably should have, but if you want to tie them together before you feed them down through, um, that might be a good idea. Hopefully my kids won't get too rough with this and pull its face off, but if they do, I'll just have to fix it. And then you just feed it down through your pug like we did before. Cut off your ends and the little pieces of yarn are going to get stuck everywhere. So pick those off <laughs> and then you're good. Okay, so now we're going to do our ears and our placement for this. Um, I, I used my dog for reference to see where her ears are. And so you're going to place them kind of like this um, sticking out funny at first and then we'll fold them down so they look like pug ears. So start off 
with them sticking out like this and they're kind of closer to the front. They're not right in the middle. They're almost in the middle, but a little bit closer to the front of the face. And then I'm just using one of my stitch markers to hold the ear in place because it's kind of like a safety pin, but you just want to pin it. And then I threaded the long end of my ear um, ends <laughs> onto my needle. And I'm just going to whip stitch it to the head right here. So I'm just going down and around and through the head down this row until it's securely attached. And you just want to make sure it's still where you want it. That's why it's good to pin it in place. Because otherwise they do tend to move on you. And I'm sorry, this is kind of hard to see. It was kind of hard to do this and also film it without getting off center a little bit. But it's just a basic whip stitch. Make sure this last stitch that you do is right in the corner of the ear. That way it's on there nice and secure and the corner isn't kind of flappy. So just make sure it's right down there in the corner. Then once you're sure it's on nice and secure, you're going to go ahead and just fold it down. So it's shaped like an actual dog's ear. If you have a dog with flappy ears, you can use them as a reference. That's what I did. And um, then you, so you're gonna feed the yarn up through. So insert it down into your pug right there in the corner. And you're just gonna bring it out about where you want that ear flap to be attached. So it's kind of just a couple stitches away from the eye of here. And then pull it through. And then you're just going to catch the, just a, one stitch under the underside of the ear, right where you want it to be pulled down onto its face. So there you go. And that'll hold that in place and then feed it back down through and bring it back out in the corner in that same spot. And then you can tie a knot with the two ends. And then go ahead and thread those ends onto your needle and feed them down into your pug. And bring them out on the other side. And again, just cut off the excess, deal with all the fluff particles. And then you can also take your crochet hook and just poke it into the if it's sticking out and then you can take that stitch marker off and one of your ears is good so you're just going to repeat that with the other ear I'm not going to show you because it's exactly the same it's just on the other side and make sure you got it in the same place so they're even but there you go I got both of the little ears on and then I took my hook and just kind of inserted it in there to twist it around a little bit just to puff up the ears a little bit you can kind of manipulate them and make them lay how you want. And there you go. We got ears. Isn't it cute? <laughs> All right. Now we're going to add our paws. So first figure out where you want them to be. And I wanted these two to be on the front, kind of just under the little um, snout area. And once I figured out where I wanted them. I got some T-pins to hold them in place and I wanted the bottom feet to be on the bottom kind of towards the front bottom though. And the cool thing about this is once you put the tail on it, it holds it up so it can stand up and it doesn't fall over. <laughs> so I put those on and then I stuck our little hand paws on. 
and I felt really weird stabbing these pins into it, so just try not to think about it. Okay, so now I'm happy with the placement of the paws, and I went ahead and stuck the tail on the back just to make sure I was really happy with all the placement. I wasn't going to sew it on just yet, but this way I could make sure it all works together and looks right. So if you get it all put on right, you'll see that it stands up nicely, which is cool. You can have it on your desk or wherever you want to put it. All right, so now that we did that, we're going to sew on our paws. So just remember that inside um, end, the, the starting end, is shoved up in there so it makes it kind of filled, the little paws filled. So take the long end, and I'm sorry you can't see this right now, but I will show you in just a second. And we're just going to whip stitch it on. So you just insert your needle through part of the pug. And I'm sorry, my arm's in the way. I swear it will move in a second. And then bring it up through the paw. And you're just going to repeat that. So I just whip stitched these on. I didn't do anything fancy. And just continue whip stitching your paw on and just be careful, like I said a few times with this yarn, because it's just bears repeating, that it will sometimes shred on you if you're not careful. And it's good to have a longer piece just in case if some of it kind of gets messed up. You'll see like there's a little bare spot in my yarn here. This piece I was a little worried that I wasn't going to make it and I was going to have to cut another piece of yarn, but it didn't. It ended up working out just fine. So just take your time and be gentle <laughs> and try not to get too frustrated if it messes up on you because as you can see, it can. But it's so cute once you're done. And here I'm about done sewing this paw on. As you can see, my yarn is in bad shape. I <laughs> kind of had a few issues with it on this paw for some reason. And then once I got done, I just went ahead and stuck it down through. I didn't tie a knot or anything. I may regret that later, but I was just done with this one <laughs> with all the trouble it was giving me. So go ahead and pull that through and cut the end and then repeat that with the other four paws and they'll all be adorable. And none of the other ones gave me any trouble for some reason, so that was good. Then we're gonna sew on the tail. So I have it pinned in place here and I have my long tail on my needle and I'm not gonna worry about the short tail right now. And we're just gonna whip stitch it to the back. And this one takes not very long to do at all because it's so small. And I decided just to go ahead and take the needle or the pin out because it was getting in my way. But you can probably sew this on with just like three stitches, two or three stitches. All right, and then once you get it sewn all the way on, we're going to go ahead and make it so it doesn't flap so much, kind of uh, attach it more to the body a little bit. So I just went down through on that corner and I brought the needle up where I wanted to attach the tail to the pug a little bit more just to make it a little more secure. You know, they like to hold their little tails up, not have them flopping around. <laughs> it's coming out there, and then I'm just, just like I did with the ear, I'm just going to catch a little bit of the tail here. And bring my needle through. 
and then go back down through the body and bring it back out in that corner where the other tail is. So insert it down and come back out over here and then we can tie a knot. Finish it off and bring the ends of the yarn through your pug and cut them off. There we go. And then like I said, just feed them down through and cut off the ends. And now there's one last detail and that is the bee hole. And this is optional. If you're not immature like me, you don't have to put this. If you've ever seen a pug, you know this is a pretty prominent feature. <laughs> so I went across like this. We're just making a little X. We don't have to get too graphic. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get perfect placement here. You know, it's very important. And bring it through and leave a little bit of a tail sticking out there. And then we're going to go back through the same spot where we came, th where our tail's sticking out. And then come up, and you're going to come out right there on the top right. And then we're going to go down and across. And sorry, it's off camera right a second, but I'll bring it back. And then bring the needle back through to where you started, and that way... We can tie a knot right here with our two ends. All right, just making sure everything is lined up. And that, that way both of your ends are coming out the same spot. And then just tie a double knot. And once you get your knot tied, you can weave the ends through just like we've done every other time. Cut them off and Get rid of any little fluff pieces, poke them back in if you have to. And your little pug is complete. And I think this is like the cutest thing. I can't get over how adorable it is. It's sitting here on my desk with me as we speak. And I just love it. I hope you love it too. I hope you make one of these. And if you do, please, please, please share a picture on Instagram and tag me at Marching North. So I can take a look because I just love seeing all of your awesome creations. It's so much fun. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.